consciousness is sort of the Cheshire cat of modern neuroscience. We don't really understand. Your miracle to one generation may be a mechanism to the next generation. Phenomena and making some real progress on how the brain produces conscious phenomena. Consciousness. So how does all this objective functioning in the brain give rise to the subjective experience of consciousness? Now, there's nothing to find a modern neuroscientist who doesn't believe that the mind is basically the Simply brain. Simply analyzing our common sense intuitions about consciousness was not going to be Not known. because there was anything wrong with this theory of mind, but because the theory of body collapsed. I think history has shown that, by and large, the best way to explain things in the world seems to be the empirical Why scientific Why is all concept? that objective functioning associated with subjective experience? In fact, that is the central mystery of consciousness, the central thing that gets the distinctive problem of consciousness going in the then first place. Then if it's place. not identical to a brain process, it's some non-brain process. And I want to know what on earth that could possibly be. It sounds a lot like that, dualism uh, to me. The world is not a machine. Uh, it involves forces that cannot be, that crucially involves forces that cannot be, uh, that, that don't fall within what was called the mechanical philosophy, the concept of the world's that the machine. The brain had many Gears surprises and... for us about the nature of consciousness about the nature of our non-conscious capacities and what they can actually do and about what might be the relationship between Okay, them. that yields the distinction between problems and mysteries. Mysteries will be what lies beyond our cognitive limits, which must exist unless we're angels. Uh, problems will be things that are within our cognitive limits.